Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. So, happy you, so happy that you are all uh, able to make it. Um, it's going to be a fun day. You can see we've got a bunch of drums. The kids have prepared uh, quite a program for us. And so uh, I hope you enjoy that. We're going to be videoing it, so if you want to rewatch it, watch your kids, watch your family, uh, I'll post that on our YouTube page. But I'll also be live feeding on our Facebook page. And so you'll be able to visit, visit our Facebook page and, and see it. So there's a couple ways of media there to be able to, to see the play. All right? I think uh, Mrs. Baker, Devin Baker, has something to say. So. Our church has been tremendously blessed by our pastors this year, and the whole congregation has come together to give them love offering. Merry Christmas, Pastor Ken. Merry Christmas, Pastor Nick. God bless and look forward to next year. God is good. Uh, can someone check to see how the progress is with, with the kids? Because I want to see Jingle Bells here in a second. <laughs> <laughs> and I know it's a super spiritual song. <laughs> Ten minutes? Okay. Well, uh, I can just stand up for a while. <laughs> um, I, I would like to just point out... One of the things that we do here at Family Life that I, I love is uh, we have a, a prayer group that meets every Sunday morning at 6, p, uh, 6 a.m. Not 6 p.m., 6 a.m. And we come together for, for no purpose whatsoever other than to just pray and get into the presence of God. And uh, this morning was you know particularly uh, a good time. We think about this time of year I think about family, I think about uh, food, friendship, kids. But really this time of year is, is about one thing. It's about a gift. A gift that was given to the world. The purpose of that gift is restoration, is what it was. Every one of us, when we were born, we were born into a thing called sin and depravity. Jesus Christ came. He was the gift that the Father God gave us to restore us back to the Father. And it's an amazing thing. So when I think about Christmas, this morning, it was funny, last night I, uh, I go to bed earlier than the rest of my family a lot of times because I, I get up a lot earlier than the rest of my family. But I was laying in bed and going to sleep and I heard my kids and my, my wife singing happy birthday to Jesus. Does anybody ever do that? Yeah. <laughs> or do a birthday cake? I feel like sometimes Christmas in, in Western society, Western culture becomes ultra commercialized. And we forget the real reason for the season. And the reason for the season is Jesus. He was the gift. Amen? There was a miracle that happened when, when Jesus came. If you think about it, God is the God of the universe, right? Like, literally, if you believe the Bible, God spoke the universe into existence. Spoke it by His very words. Life was formed, and matter came together, and planets came together by His very word. And that God of the universe chose to become a baby in the womb of a woman. I want you guys just to process that for a second. He could have very easily, he's the God of the universe, he could have showed up 30 years old, buffed, ready to roll. <laughs> but he didn't. He chose to be put into the womb of a woman, to be carried in the womb of a woman for 10 months. 10 months is full term, not 9 months. He was delivered. Listen, he, he pooped, he peed. He did all those things. And the point is, there's no shortcut. Jesus didn't take any shortcuts in bringing us back to the Father. He did it the hard way. 
And imagine this for a second. Jesus was given an assignment from birth, and he understood his assignment. He knew what he was here to do. He was here to set humanity right, to set mankind right. And he walked the earth for 30 years with that knowledge, with that understanding of what he was supposed to do. And he was seeing things like death and mayhem. And he had the power, he had the assignment to change things, but he didn't do it until the appropriate time. Imagine how hard that would be. This was the gift, though. The gift was to restore us back to the Father. Adam's disobedience brought separation between us and God, and it killed the spirit man. How many of you ever read the Bible in Genesis chapter 1 where it says, if they eat of the fruit, if you eat of this fruit, you shall surely die. Has anybody ever read that? It's in the Bible, right? Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, eat of this fruit, they ate of it, right? What died? Because they didn't die right away, did they? Adam and Eve lived to be like over 900 years old. So, so something died, and that was the spiritual man. See, we're born into this world with the ability to become spiritual beings as well as physical beings. And that's not soulish beings, that's spiritual beings. And what happens is, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, the spirit man awakens. We call it being born again. Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, who was a, a spiritual ruler of the day of Jesus. And he said, Nicodemus, in order for you to inherit the kingdom of heaven, you must be born again. And Nicodemus said, what are you talking about? I'm going to go back in my mother's womb when I'm old. He said, no, you need to be born of spirit and of the water. In other words, there needs to be a regeneration that happens within the heart of man. It happens by the Spirit of God. When we put faith in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit is given to us and we become born again into the Spirit of man. We become alive to God, to where God hears us and acknowledges us and we can hear Him and acknowledge Him. We become children of our Father. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit will bear witness with our spirit that we are children of the Father. You become a child of the God of the universe. Awaken spiritually. Pretty awesome. Karen, are we ready to sing Jingle Bells? We're doing some deep stuff here. Again, I'm just burning time right now. Things never go off without a hitch. I'm, I'm probably too... Uh, I like to be punctual, like on time. And uh, how many of you know kids don't ever operate in that way? If you notice, my wife and I take two cars here, and there's a reason for that. Yeah. I like to be early, and uh, my wife actually does too, but the kids. <laughs> Not so much. And we have three. Three under, uh, how old is Kate? Anybody know? Seven. Three under seven. <laughs> Think about it. We've been dealing with diapers for seven years. Yeah. But God is good, amen. God is so good. Alright, I'll let you guys ask you guys to stand, yes. Okay. Okay, we're gonna, I guess. Hold on, hold on.
Everybody remember their parts? We got a story here. So, are we ready? Okay, here's where our story starts. I don't have any. Okay. This story is from the book of Luke, chapter 2. Joseph. A holy night. Went to the city. Sheep. Sheep. They went to the city. Where are the sheep? <laughs> oh, we got some sheep. Oh, there we go. They went to the. Yep, there's a city of Haven. Called Bethlehem. To be registered with Mary. <laughs> to whom he was engaged and to who was expecting a child. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them at the end. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then the angel... Of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel. said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you this day is born in the city. Sheep. Where are you? Sheep. <laughs> yeah. Of David, a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child. Wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God in the highest heaven and saying, On earth, peace among those who he favors. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds <laughs> said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary. And Joseph and the child <laughs> lying in the manger. When they saw this, they had made known what had been told about them, about this child. Yeah. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds <laughs> told them that Mary <laughs> treasured these words and pondered them in her heart. Yay! Put your drumsticks on your knees. <laughs> 
Maybe you'll be all right. Guys, guys, we're ready for this one. Okay, you're ready. Okay. Everybody's got their drums. Okay. On your ready. Okay. Drumsticks on your knees. Everybody follow Kaden. Kaden knows where those drumsticks go on your knees. Just like Ben's got them.
what child this is? And yeah, we'll do this one. Yeah, we'll go back to Mario. when God or when uh, when God uh, sent his son to this earth in his mind it was not business his own business but not business for the world how to prosper economically his uh, when I read the Bible it says that uh, John 3 16 it says that he so loved the world <laughs> that he gave his only son and he says that whoever believes in him will have eternal life so when I read that it, it, it tells me that in the in the mind or in God was alright I love you so much that you deserve living with me not only for like a hundred years or 80 years or 60 years for the eternity with me in heaven because I have a home prepared for you 
And the only way that you can come to next to me is me providing my only son. The only there is nothing else. Uh, when uh, Jesus was was praying at the Olive Mountain, the Bible says that he was crying. The last night when he knew that the next day he was gonna take him to the to the cross and he was crying there and the Bible says that all the 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 tears it was blood everywhere coming out from him because too much stress on him because he was looking at it what he was gonna go through the next day and the Bible says that he was crying and he said, Father, if there is another way, please, but do your will. Do not do what I want. Just do your will in me. And he was, and he went back to the, to the two uh, disciples who cried with him and he found them sleeping. And he said, what's going on with you? You don't understand that we are getting into a really bad situation. Why you just cannot pray with me a little bit longer? And he says that he went back and he said, Father, if there is another way, please find. But do you will? But there was another, no other way. God says, no. There is no other way. There is no money. There is no land. There is no animal that the human can sacrifice. It's only you. You are the only lamb that the perfect lamb. And, and uh, Jesus said, God, you will be done. The time will come. And then when he was taken to the cross, and the last breath, he said, Father, all done. And then when the soldier poked him in the ribs, it says that there was no blood, there was nothing, there was no life in him. He was dead at the cross. The price was paid for us at the cross. So how now we say that Jesus came just to prosper us through December? He prospered us for the eternity Amen. not only for December he prosper us here maybe we're not gonna prosper here like the way we want it but our prosperity is when the day will be with him in the other side in the eternity God says welcome to my kingdom you believe in me, you trust in me, you walk with me. Here I am, waiting for you. Welcome, son. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you Father. Woo! Thank you, Lord. That's the purpose of Christmas. Believing in Him, trusting in Him, not stressing ourselves up, trying to buy a presents. That's many of us apply for uh, credit, credit cards and <laughs> put a lot of money into that and uh, in uh, January we are so stressed because the paycheck is not enough to pay that. What's the point be Christmas when, I, when in January and the rest of the year I'm stuck with the credit card? <laughs> Jesus, I believe that you pay the whole price for my freedom. Yes. I'm free because you love me so much. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for that. And the tithes and offering, we, I think the basket, they're going to be somewhere right here. If you feel free, feel free to uh, whatever God has in your heart. God bless you. Thank you, Father. Bless the tithes and offering. Thank you for this time. We know, Lord, that you didn't born in December. But we believe that one day you born and you paid the whole price for us. Thank you for that, Lord. And we want to bless your name. Please bless our... Uh, pastor and his family 
this congregation, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Father. Amen. God bless you all. I picked this song. It's called Noel. And it's about a bird. And it, its meaning is it's so good. I didn't know Mario was going to make me cry. <laughs> But it's so good what the Lord has for us. And I just want to take a minute to praise Him. I just want to take a minute to thank Him. Oh, praise God.
want to draw your attention to Luke chapter 2, verse 10. Luke chapter 2, verse 10. It says, But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, before, for behold, I bring to you good news of great joy, which will be for all people. For today, in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Joy. Hope. Hope came in this, this precious baby. This baby boy. Jesus. Why? Hope of what? Salvation of, from, from what? You see, this is what was prophesied from Genesis. In every book of the Bible, from Genesis through Revelation, what would happen? That the Messiah would be sent. And why? There are two reasons really that I can see why Jesus would come and why this would be a joyful thing. Number one, Jesus came to restore God's children back to the Father. Number two, Jesus came so that we may live eternally with the Father. Now, some of us can't grasp the idea of eternity. One of the things that I've done is, is really, um, I've, I've read a, a lot of books and done a real, an academic study, really, of what happens when we die. And if you, if you look into this subject, uh, the community that studies this, call, they call it an NDE, people that have come back from, from what they call a near-death experience. And there are a couple of things that people experience in, in this. Generally, there's an engulfing of light. But it's not light like we experience here on the earth, like this is light shining on me. This light, for most, permeates their being. It's a light that many describe as love. And they recognize almost immediately that that's the Father. And He's shining His love upon His children. The other thing that they acknowledge is people that have gone on before them, they encounter them in this place in heaven or on the way to heaven. They encounter them. And they know them. But they know them more deeper. I know that's probably not proper English. But they know them deeper than they have ever known them. And when they embrace, it's like they become one. It's a reuniting that is powerful. I don't know about you, but for me, this is something to be joyful about. Not only do I get to live forever in the presence of my Savior, I get to live forever in the presence of those family members who have gone on before me. And I get to know them deeper and, and more intimate than I've ever known them. Let me tell you something, a little bit something about your God. Your Father is an intimate Father. He's one that loves you without, you know, any... We, we can't even comprehend the depths of the love that the Father has for you. Now, I have children, and I love my children. Imagine, God loves your children, and God loves you more than you love your children. Can you imagine that? He loves you. You're the apple of His eye. See, Jesus died. Jesus came and lived and died. He was come into the womb of a woman, was carried for nine months, went through all that stuff, for you and for I. Because you were His prize. You were the prize that He came to win. 
You are the, the reward that He receives. And someday, someday, we will be reunited with the Father face to face. We will see Jesus in heaven. Or perhaps we will meet with Jesus and be there for a few years and then we come back and rule and reign with the Lord for, for eternity. But we will be with the Father and we will be with our family and we will be with our loved ones. We will be in a place of community with our children. This is joyful. This is good news. This is the gospel. The gospel is not a self-help tip. The gospel is transformation of life. It's revelation of the reality of what Jesus did on the cross. The revelation is this. He changed us. He transferred us, transformed us from physical beings to spiritual beings so that we can live forever with Him. He gave us the ability. Now I want you to listen to this one. This is crazy, but it's truth. He gave us the ability to walk in fellowship with Him today, now. We don't have to wait for anything to happen. See, a lot of people are waiting to die to go to heaven. But see, here's the deal. Jesus died so that heaven could come into us. Amen. So the Spirit of God become alive within us. So that we can walk with Him and talk with Him and have fellowship and intimacy with the Father. He restored us back to what we were always supposed to be. When you look at Adam, Adam walked with the Father before the fall, didn't he? Why? Because he was alive flesh, but he was also alive in the spirit. He was a spiritual being. What died the moment that Adam and Eve ate of that fruit? The spirit man died. The spiritual aspect of his being died. What was restored the moment that Jesus died on that cross and rose again? The spiritual man was restored back to mankind. That any who would believe upon the name of Jesus Christ would be saved. This is good news. He delivers us from fear. And fear of what, really? You know what the chief thing that the enemy uses to usurp authority over people is fear of death. Jesus conquered death. He made us alive forevermore. I don't know about you, but for me, this is good news. He gave us the ability to walk holy and righteous before them. And listen, listen, I want you to know something. Most people don't view themselves as holy or righteous. Most people that are in Christ, they, they don't view themselves that way. But here's what the Bible says. The Bible says that, in fact, you are holy. You are righteous in Jesus. It's not something that I'm waiting to happen. Listen, listen. If you're set free, if you find freedom from sin, if you find freedom from sin upon death, then death becomes your Savior and not Jesus. Jesus came to set you free. I don't know about you. That's good news. That's something to be hopeful and joyful about. So I want to close with this. I want you to know that your Father loves you. Yes. Mm -hmm. I want to say it one more time. Your Father loves you. And this isn't a love that you've been conditioned in. We've all grown up in this world, right? And the word love in this world has become a twisted thing. Your father loves you, and there's nothing that you can do that will ever change that. This isn't blasphemy, okay? This is the truth. Nothing. You can't be so bad that the father says, man, I don't love that kid anymore. 
And let me tell you something else. You can't be so good that the Father says, well, that's my favorite. He loves you with an everlasting love that goes deeper and further than you can ever imagine. He communicated that love with the, with the blood of His own Son, Jesus Christ. And that blood washes us clean, white as snow. It's called grace. We become a recipient of grace when we put faith in our, in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We become a recipient of grace. And what does grace do? Grace washes us clean. And so when the Father looks upon us, no more is there sin that separates us from Him. He has opened the door wide open so that we can come and have fellowship with the Father. That we can have intimacy with the Father. He looks at us and He sees holy, righteous, clean children by the blood of Jesus. This is what He has done. He has opened the door of heaven to you and to I. And we can walk in the presence of the Father on a daily basis. I'm not waiting for anything to happen. Heaven has come down. Heaven has come down. He's here now. And He loves you. He's taken away. Listen, listen, listen. Everyone in this room, listen to me. Jesus takes away your guilt, your shame, and your condemnation. These were the three things that the law showed us. Our guilt, our shame, and our condemnation. Jesus came and fulfilled the law so that we would no longer walk. Listen, listen. We would no longer walk in guilt, shame, and condemnation. That we can walk in the presence of our Father on a daily basis in fellowship with Him. He has set you free. Listen to me. You, you were worth the sacrifice that was made for you. You are valuable to your Father. He paid a, a steep price for you. And he said it was worth every drop. He did it to win you. You're his prize. Not that someday you could come and be in his presence, but that you could be in his presence right now. Jesus opens his arms to you right now. And he says, come. You have the right as children of your father to come into his presence. The veil has been removed. See, many people come and pray and their prayers are like this. Lord, I'm worthless. I just need grace. And we all need grace. Praise God for grace. But here's the deal. Jesus came to move us beyond sin consciousness into sun consciousness. To no more dwell upon all the things that we've done wrong. Jesus came to make everything right. So that I could walk with the understanding and the consciousness that I, I, I am a child of my Father. And He loves me. And listen, you are children of your Father. And He loves you. He has set everything right. Now I want to challenge you in this room today. Many of you have come into this place and you're carrying weights. And you've been burdened by the world. Maybe your own insufficiencies and your own mistakes or maybe things that have happened to you and circumstances and situations that you've had to go through and you don't understand why. Let me tell you right now, there's an answer and his name is Jesus. And he's here today. You don't have to wait to go meet him. He's here today for you. For you. Cast, cast those burdens upon him. He loves you. One more thing. I think about, I think about this.
prodigal son. And the prodigal son, he said, Dad, give me my inheritance. The father did it. And he let him go do his thing. And he went and partied. He partied it up. Pretty soon he found himself out of money and there was a famine. And he was hired out to a pig farmer and he was feeding the swine. And he became hungry, but there was no food. So hungry that the feed that he was feeding the pigs, he thought about filling his belly with pig slop. Then he came to his wits all of a sudden and he said, you know what? My father, his hired servants, have food enough to eat. I'll go back to my father. And this is what I'll say. I'll say, Father, I'm not worthy to be your son. I've sinned before God and before you. Make me a hired servant. And he began his journey back. But while the son, listen, this is important. While the son was still a far way off. The father saw him. And the father ran to him. And he put, put his arms around him and the son said, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, father, I've got something to say to you. Father, I've sinned against God and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be your son. Make me a hireling. The father didn't even acknowledge it. He put a robe on his son. He put a ring on his finger. He told his servant to go and kill the fatted calf. For my son was dead, but now he is alive. He was lost, but now he is found. Notice that the father, listen, this is your father God. Notice that the father saw his son while he was still afar off. And while we were yet in sin, Christ died for us. Don't tell me that God doesn't love you. He desires you. You're his prize. And when we come to the Father, he rejoices. I want to invite you in just a moment just to stand with me. We're going to pray. And here's, here's what's going to happen. Listen, when I, I can't do it anymore. I can't pray with an agenda. I used to pray with an agenda. I can't. Anytime I enter into prayer, I feel the Father welcoming me to a place of fellowship and intimacy with Him. And I can begin to feel His love surround me. And I know that I'm a child of God. See, this is, this is a zone that I call the revelatory zone. It's where revelation is revealed. Did you know that God is still revealing himself to people today? And it happens through intimacy with him and through fellowship with him. The very thing that Jesus Christ died on the cross to restore. We can come to the Father boldly in our time of need because the veil has been removed. And right now, in just a moment, I'm going to invite you to pray. And I want you to pray with the understanding that you are no longer a sinner. Listen to me. Sin does not separate you from your Father anymore. If you have, listen, if you have a sin in your life, repent of it. The Bible says very simply, repent. What does that mean? Turn away from it. And confess it to the Father. And what happens? He washes you white as snow. And live in that place. Live in the identity of not what you have done, but the identity of who you have become. You have become the righteousness of the Father. You have become the holiness of God. You have become saints of the Father. You understand that? The moment that you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and He washes you and you become a recipient of grace, you become the holiness and the righteousness of God. He has given you free access to Him and you can walk in that place. You can live in that place. You can walk daily in fellowship with the Father. You can walk daily in intimacy with the Father and He will take you deeper than you ever thought you could go. He will give you understanding beyond anything you can imagine. He will show you things that you can never imagine without Him. 
He will reveal to you amazing truths. And it happens, listen, it happens in that place of intimacy. And so when I pray now, I can't pray, Lord, I lay me down to sleep. I can't. I can't. When I turn my eyes to the Father, He draws me. He draws me to a place of intimacy. He draws me to a place of fellowship. And all of a sudden, I begin to hear His voice. I begin to feel His presence. And He's calling you to that very same place. The Bible calls that the Holy of Holies. There's a real Holy of Holies. We're going to go there. Does anybody want to go to the Holy of Holies with me this morning? Does anybody want to listen? Your God, your Father is about encounter. I want to say that with absolute, total conviction. He's not, he's not a, I lay me down to sleep God. He's a God of encounter. He's a personal God. And He loves you. And when you come to Him with this revelation, I'm, I'm giving this to you, but you've got to receive it. Listen, when you come to Him with this revelation, He reveals Himself to you in amazing ways. It's not about you being worthy. You've been made worthy. It's not about you being too, you know, so good that, that you've earned His approval. You've been given His approval through Jesus. The blood of Jesus was more than enough. Thank you. Stand with me. So in just a moment, listen. I'm just going to pray. Again, I can't just pray... superficial prayers anymore. It's too late for that for me. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit would descend upon you. And in an instance, listen, in an instance, you're going to encounter your Father. His love. And that love will overtake you. Are you ready? Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus right now that you would send your Holy Spirit upon every person that is coming to your house this morning. I pray, Father, that they would encounter you like never before. I pray, Father, that every yoke of bondage that is in their life would be broken off, completely shredded right now. Lord, that every inhibition, Father, that is in their life, completely removed right now in the name of Jesus. Reveal the truth of your love to them in the name of Jesus right now. Touch them right now. Draw them, Father God, into your holy of holies by the power of your Spirit. Holy Spirit, descend. Descend upon these people right now. We're not interested in lip service. We're not interested in ritual. We're interested in relationship. We want to know you, Father. We want to know you. We want to be in deep relationship with you. Holy Spirit, do your work in this place. Touch their hearts right now. Now, in the name of Jesus.
that I don't have to come to you through works. I don't have to come to you through the law. I can come to you through faith in Jesus Christ. And the grace that Jesus poured out upon me makes me clean. It makes me holy. It makes me righteous. And I can come before the Father. And the Father accepts me. And I can come to Him, Father. I can come to you in your, my time of need. I can sense your presence. And I can hear your voice. And I can receive revelation in your holy of holies. And right now, I pray, Father God, that you would give us a holy of holies experience in the house of God. I pray, Father, that you would begin to manifest your love upon your people right now in the power of your spirit. That you, Lord God, would become more alive and more real to these people than they've ever experienced in their life. I pray for a mighty outpouring of your spirit. I pray, Father God, that their fire would descend upon these people. Baptize us, Lord, in the Holy Spirit and fire right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we come to you. We come to you not in ritual, but in expectation. We've come to you, Father God, to receive an encounter and a relationship with you. We've come to you today, Lord God, to receive revelation from your throne. I pray, Father, that your truths, your truths, Father, would be revealed to these people in the name of Jesus. The reality that you have made them right in the eyes of the Father. Father God, I pray that Jesus Christ, Jesus, would just move upon these people and the revelation of the gospel will become a reality of our lives and we will begin to walk with the full knowledge of what you have done for us in Jesus name right now now hallelujah 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 you are good father holy spirit is here hallelujah yes lord he is here when the Holy Spirit comes, He comes to reveal truth. He's a revelator. He comes to bring validation and approval. All right. I'm going to close. As I do, I'm going to pray for you. And here's my prayer. That you would walk in this revelation. You are a child of your Father in heaven. And He loves you. He values you. He's taken away your guilt, shame, and condemnation. He's made you clean. He's made you holy. And He's made you righteous. You can't add anything to what Jesus did. He did it all. You know the one thing that the Father wants from you? Listen, this is, this is key. The one thing that he wants from you is surrender. Yes, yes, that's it. That's it. Surrender to the Father. Surrender. So I'm going to pray that you surrender. Father God, right now in Jesus' name, I pray that every one of us will surrender our entire life, our entire being to you. That you, Father God, you, Father God, would have control. Take control. Take control. Take control, Lord God. We surrender. Consume us. Consume us in your spirit. Let us walk every day with the full knowledge and the revelation of who we become through Jesus Christ. This gift when, merit, when, when heaven came down. Let us walk in this revelation completely consumed, completely saturated by your truth. I pray in the name of Jesus. Let this truth and this revelation be at the forefront of our mind and let it direct everything that we do from this point forward, I pray. And I pray, Father God, that every single person that has come in the house today would become a recipient of everything that you have given them, Lord God. I pray for an infilling of the Holy Spirit and a baptism of the Holy Spirit. Father, your word says that the one comes, Jesus, who will baptize us with the Holy Spirit and fire. I pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire upon every single person that is in the house of God today. I pray, Father, that they walk by the Spirit and deny the lust of the flesh. I pray in the name of Jesus that we would walk in true identity, the identity that you've created us in, that we are children of our Father and we have been given every right 
right and ability to walk in holiness and righteousness. That we've been set free from guilt, shame, and condemnation. That we've been set free from the power of sin. That we can walk in your presence and in fellowship and in intimacy with you. And I pray, Lord God, that we would learn to abide in your presence. Abide in you, Father God, everywhere we go. Let, the, let us abide in you in the name of Jesus, I pray. Let this revelation become the reality in their life. Let this truth become their reality, I pray. In the name of Jesus, power of God, come down. Listen, I don't know how to close, but here's what I'm going to say. Listen. I can do this all day. The presence of God is here. He is here because He loves you. He responds to His children. Okay? And I know it's Christmas. I know. I, I know okay? And I, I really wanted to do like a, just a Christmas message, but I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't go to prayer anymore and just pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He's my dad. He's my father. He loves me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He loves you. Hallelujah. Let it consume you, okay? Listen. Those of you that don't know me, if I haven't had a chance to shake your hand, I apologize, but I want to exhort you. Grab my card. And if you have any questions about today, don't hesitate to call. Also, also, listen, we have food, and we're going to have a photo booth back there. It's going to be a fun time. I want you just to enjoy each other. Listen, you know what heaven's going to be like? We're going to be together forever. You know what the church should be? A type and shadow of heaven. Let's just hang out. Can we do that? All right. Bless you guys. I love you. I love you. Father, listen. If you don't remember anything I said today, remember this. Father God loves you. Amen? Amen. God good? Yes, Hallelujah. Yeah, if he wants to, yeah, I'd go ask.